Hello and welcome to Talking Simulator. I am Ke- I am Cameron. And I'm Corey. Today we're continuing our playthrough of Disco Elysium, where I will probably continue to be bad at being a cop who is also bad at being a cop. That's 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 my pitch for this game. I started another playthrough at home, mm -hmm. uh, because of course I did. Right. Uh, with physical instrument as my, my key skill. So you're just like... Just tearing doors off hinges and kicking down. It's like, I've so far basically opened every other door that I could not open <laughs> the first playthrough. And oh my goodness, I got into that shipping container. Really? Oh, oh, I talked my way through a door and it was <laughs> better than I could have possibly imagined. I assumed mm -hmm. that Everard's twin brother would be like dead and inside there mm -hmm. and Everard would be like covering that up. No, that's not what's in there, but I won't tell you what. Mm. <laughs> because after we played this last week, I went home and began a playthrough with, um, what's the city focused one? Uh, not in the Empire. Is it the Shiver? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where the city just whispers <laughs> to you all the time. And yeah, that rules. Mm -hmm. I went utterly like mediocre on everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've got, I got a reasonable chance of throwing the dice on any check. Mm. And, yeah, it works. Also, just listening to the city is kind of awesome. It is. Hmm. I think I'm going to do one with uh, perception and conceptualization next. Ooh. But, look, let's, let's actually play this game. Mm. If you are curious about the cookies, you too can experience these cookies by stopping at a subway establishment. Mm -hmm. Not the mode of transport, but rather the cleverly named... Sandwich shop. Yeah. And have the identical cookies anywhere on Earth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Game? Ah. Not big. Mm -mm. Loed game. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we'll be doing subs and other notifications at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes in order not to derail our train of thought. So we've spoken to the uh, owner of the bookshop who mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have actually very much interest in books. Which well, she's very concerned with her business and that her daughter is uh, making her way in the world. Mm -hmm. We just wandered in to her business in dishwasher gloves and holding a crowbar. One thing I didn't notice the first time Mm -hmm. Set free has three T's in it. It's been that way the whole time. And it even makes reference to it. Mm-hmm. Sick. Sick. Um, a multi gust of air. That's a vivid description. Oof. All right, well, Let's go make some cash then. Yeah, otherwise we can't buy the board games. <sighs> um, what is on our to-do list? What do we got going on? Yeah, let's let's have a boo, shall we? Track right. down your gun. Gun. Track down your badge. Uh huh. Pay for damages. Who made the call? Inspect the victim's body. So we've got the ammonia and the ba the the gloves. Have we gotten the body down? No. All right. So we got to drink and smoke and get a body down. Yep. Let the body hit the floor. 
I kind of want to explore up here, though. Oh, yeah. Another thing I learned, mm -hmm. uh, it says in like the tips that sp space bar stops, but it also opens your head bubbles. So if you have an orb around your head, space oh. bar will stop you from moving and open the orb. Ooh, okay. I wonder if our, like, from my experience playing at home, I've only played a couple of hours, but now I know that the thing has been pawned. Or I believe the gun has been pawned. Yes, you sold your gun. I love how cormorants are bad at being birds and also bad, or bad at flying and bad at uh, floating. Mm. Not like the kua or the mighty albatross. Mm. Sorry, I meant skua. Skua. Not, not kua. Not the cabbie. Kuno is such a piece of shit. He really is. I do like how um, our partner is afraid of him, though. Seems like the best thing you can do with him is split a kilo of speed. <laughs> really? I think so. Awesome. Hmm. You can talk to her. Okay. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue d'Esperance. You wait and see. All right. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth? Blood type? The last time I was tested for Hep C. And here I was, trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. Hmm. Despite the sash, sass, she puts the brush aside. Do you know anything about murder? She wrinkles her nose. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forge in somebody else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What are you looking at? That's a nice yatched. Mm-hmm. Got a little yachty over there. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. Joyce Messier. That ozone whore. Someone's gonna keep an eye on her. Who is she? Probably the wild... Probably the wild pines... Wild pines rep. We should talk to her. Nods in her direction. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she'll be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead, ask her unexpected questions. You know, do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Hmm. What are you doing to the wall? Arrow graffito visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. <laughs> I have an opinion on this. You want to hear it? Yeah! I love public art. <laughs> <laughs> you made it so uncool. Yeah. Watch your back, ungulate. <laughs> Stay fresh, cheese bags. I think what you're doing is really cool. Support oh the arts. Oh my god. Rock on, child. 
It's so boss. Yeah. Dope. Docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Ghislaine 33 -a. Your room in the whirling is much bigger than the sloop. This is worth more than you'll ever earn in all your life. Oh. Alright, Joyce! Oh, we missed a thing. Oh no! It'll be back. Leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as, you're, as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. She extends her hand in greeting. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the Messier. board of Wild Pines, Messier. the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hands over the railing. Shake her hand. Wait, we're supposed to throw her off all the time, right? I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Go for it. I'm... What do you think will happen if you ask for money? She'll say no. What if she says yes, and then we can buy a board game? Ooh. You seem rich. Can I have some money? <laughs> but it isn't easy, is it? Look at that lady. Take a gander. What nice fabrics. Well, yes, tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt matching a scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from cold, her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry, wealth and all its possibilities. Yeah, so? Look at you, you misery-clad simian, barely able to tie your own laces. You're on Pitzer Lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead, and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... <laughs> what is this feeling? I've never felt it before. <laughs> Shame? You haven't been in the presence of gentle folk either, have you? What is sh what shame is there to be felt in front of these dock workers, cops, and hotel clerks, but to belittle yourself in the eyes of Odenil? Oh, God, the lieutenant is here too. Do not dishonor the force. <laughs> As I was saying, her voice breaks the silence and suddenly you're back again. Nearby a seagull picks at a piece of garbage. If there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> you can totally do it. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, you could ask her something about her job then. Yeah. So what do they do? The pun. The pun. Hmm? Go ahead. The pine's core competency is logistics, container shipping, freight, and that sort of thing. She points to the small dots on the horizon. See those airships there blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And then to the east, towards the harbor, and that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with the energy, oil, and gas exploration. Offshore platforms. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you last year the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. A billion? We, we don't know what a billion is, apparently. 
Yes, yeah, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary, but they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on wild pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of wild pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? And it's, it is a terrible, tremendous responsibility. So, how do you make your money? Uh, they started as an exploration and cargo fleet, conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Isolus 250 years ago, when the Pines ship explored the South Seminis and charted Low Menthang on behalf of the Suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to reemerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. What does such a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? She gives you a little smile. Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? You don't keep it moving, the workers do. The company is nothing without them. We built this district, she says calmly. All the best parts of it. Rue St. Ghislaine and its bastions, the Plaza Metarian Mosaic, even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to investments from WP. She points behind you where all the seawall where the seawall rises. Seventy thousand families built that. You just got paid for it. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revishal, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revishalian employees. A company getaway. For a weekend or a summer holiday, then came the revolution, but that's another matter. She takes a sip. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Hmm. Sure, tell me about the lynching. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. The lieutenant hands her a piece of blue plastic. I'm Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. He points to you. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious, she returns the lieutenant's badge and turns to you. Why is that, detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. I remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode. My lost badge is related to it. I see. She looks increasingly worried. So are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Yes. Can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, I could have eaten it, for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, the city, nothing. Oh, dear. She sighs with confusion, sadness, even. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. Don't even know how to respond. I do believe, naive as it may sound, uh, simply can't imagine what you'd gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, the lieutenant interjects, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. Uh, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on, she's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some kind of mutually beneficial agreement. What kind of arrangement would it be? How do I negotiate my way out of this? E. Surely there's some other way we can demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you, she puts down her thermal cup. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it with my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into the matter before, to no avail. 
Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or, she picks back the cup back up, you can recover your badge, though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, the lieutenant closes his notebook. A word in private before we continue. Excuse us for a moment, madame. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be your henchman. Oh, so we're henchmen now? This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. I didn't really have many options. You just, you know, go find my badge. Oh! He nods slowly. That would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world's is large. The world's is large, and your badge is eight by six centimeters. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. Well, let's get back to her then. I'm so bad at being a cop. You're back. Good. What Ask for I money. <laughs> Voila! You're doing it. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Why, yes, I am rich. How much money do you need? Hopefully not too much. I couldn't bring it all with me. <laughs> She's surprisingly nonchalant about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament? I would like... I would like 100 real. That's a good sum. Not too small, not fantastically large. She reaches into her raincoat and pulls out a zip bag. In it, you see paper notes arranged like black gills. She removes a few notes and hands them to you. The paper is cold and oily to the touch. Whoa, 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 did you see how easy that was? <laughs> Ask her for more. Toot toot, drained money town. Woo woo. <clears throat> nay, nay, twould be dishonorable, and mine honor is my life. Can you eat honor? Are you an honorvore? Give me a break. So, she returns the zip bag to her jacket. I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically under illegal under the Emergency Act. One of the few good men in Ravishol. Oh, you bribed me, all right. I'm your little peon now. You're right, ma'am, that donations are permitted under the Emergency Act, unseemly as it may be, as long as they're properly logged with the precinct. Which you most certainly will do, she bows, then raises a single eyebrow in your direction. Now, how else can I help the RCM, t RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? You're on a boat. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stepping all over... <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> why, yes, I am. She looks at the deck under her feet. Green and white sails flutter overhead. <laughs> Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelate 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. It's a beautiful boat. Deserves a proper name. Cool, but your boat needs a name. Okay, how about Cordelate 19? Why? She taps the side of the boat and makes a hollow sound. Because it was manu manufactured in Revachelle East by a company called Cordelate, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about the X something? The X something. The X what? <laughs> the X wife? Thank you for the suggestion. I see the word has emotional resonance for you. For me, sadly, none. So I'll stick with the factory name. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft, a 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for category one racing, though these days I mainly use it for business. And how do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. Her lip curls into a wry smile. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the con interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. I really do, the lieutenant. The lieutenant thinks, is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you, I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Qualified pleasure, pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Can I see your license? I just renewed its safety inspection last month, officers. It is completely seaworthy. 
In fact, it's taken part of, it's taken part in not one, but two insulinic regattas. He even finished once. What happened the other time? The other time I would have finished the race were it not for an urgent work matter, much like the one I'm on now. Still need to see that license, ma'am. Actually, you don't. The Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. It's a little known fact among us law officials. Wait, how little known is this fact? I was just being polite. Even school children know the Wayfarer Act. So we can't pull over random civilians and demand their papers? It's weak. Unless it's their passport. No, do you want to ask for the lady's passport? You need to save face if you want her respect. I'm going to need to see her passport. <laughs> of course. She searches the pockets of her raincoat, producing a bundle of documents in a sealed plastic bag. <clears throat> he didn't even look at them. <laughs> Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. She looks around. We are on an archipelago. How else are we supposed to get around? Wait, we're on an arc. What do you mean, archipelago? I mean, we're on Lakayu. Are we not? She raises her brow. Hmm. Still haven't seen anyone else on a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else driving a souped-up Kupri Kiname. Uh, motor carriage, either. Actually, the lieutenant becomes defensive. That motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Revishol Industrial Harbor. It is not a toy. Neither is this. The woman pats the cabin hardtop. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revishol, between the city and the islands. She's having a good time arguing against the law. Too good, perhaps. I think I have a handle on this boat thing. Good. She takes a sip of her thermal cup. <laughs> Tell me about the strike. Everything she smiles. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. What if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements, and that gives me the right to silence. <clears throat> that gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. Wouldn't want to disturb an octopus. Better let it be. Glad you see it that way. To repeal the act would mean repealing the coalition government, the one that leashes, leases you the right to police West Revishal. But I'm derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. What is your role in this, precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me in the harbor. There's a 2.2 meter racist behemoth rock blocking the gate. How are the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago, she thinks. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. He looks at his notes. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the Union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I would guess you could say, aggressive? The scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? She raises her brow. You mean the huddled masses of jam rock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you, not right now at least. It's implied she's open to discussing the matter with you at a later occasion. What happened to Gaumont? Mr. Clare told him, how did he put it? She pauses to compose herself. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Not cool. Keep in mind, this is 
a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before and who is more than fair with him in the Union. Sounds like usual aggressive posturing. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere and banners. What do they say? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. I don't know what to... Th tell me what to think about that. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs to, the signature of it, each of the 2,200 workers in this Martinez tour, well, terminal. Just... Oh, sorry. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, but they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of the Wild Pines group. Oh. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assumed that it was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic on, with the side of mockery. There's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now people are getting lynched. I hear behind the whirling in rags, a disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, the lieutenant looks up from his notes. From whom did you hear about the lynching? Her reply comes quick. I first heard from a boya at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he was called Call Me Manana. This checks out. Tell me about Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of his workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. He's the most corrupt individual I've ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Oh, there are two of them. Yes, Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everett does. When one's tor term as a foreman is up, the other one takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Tell me about the union. The Deberdeer's union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway, it... Must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act, but they did it, and I can respect that. She dusts her hair. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob, the lieutenant says succinctly. The Debeldales are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, we're forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer, she nods. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. She turns to you. And your opinion, detective, if I may ask? I'm curious and talkative. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see, she explains. Would you say the Debordier's union is... I prefer not to have an opinion on these things. Of course, officer. You said something happened in the elections. Mm -hmm. Glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Yeah, that happens. Does it? She arches her brow. The company suspects foul play, but there's nothing that they could do. It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out while you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That's all I need here. Let's change the topic. All right. What about this drug trafficking? It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola to Revachal with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL, and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. The materials from this come from Samara to Ravishal through the terminal? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pinton seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, ma'am. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sell it, sells drugs, I mean? 
We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no, as far as the company knows, the union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. And you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everard and the dock workers union. Still, she raises her bony fingers, every chain has its weak link. Oh, and I have bolt cutters. Unlikely, officer. I'm talking about the lorries. Once the ingredients reach Jamrock, they're distributed through a network of local manufacturers, well beyond our grasp, but in transit, they may be vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. You'll be indebted to her in a way, but one step ahead of the Union in another. Mm. Why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? We did. On more than one occasion, apparently there's some sort of inner precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement, but we also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, she smiles and points towards the roundabout. Here's your chance, officers. Fine. We will take this case, probe the driver, see what it yields. Excellent. She takes a long sip of tea. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. You should have the time you need. Hmm. Thank you. That's all for now. Of course, Detective. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was probably less successful than I wanted it to be. It's not much you can do without your badge. Mm-hmm. We should find that. We've got a hundred dollars. We've got a hundred dollars. Well, whale, whale, did we look at the dumpster? Uh, we looked at the label. I don't think we looked at, I don't think the, uh, lid was available to look at. Oh, there, there it, it is. Yee. We get that pry bar. Trash container is locked. The sliding lid is padlocked. This is whirling in rags. There's something in here. Not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you could smell the sm prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in here? Trash? Food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Hmm. He leans in to inspect the lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar, the one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or, Lieutenant? Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. We could embarrass ourselves. In front of children? <laughs> yeah! You know, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. 
pigs come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck, are you trying to pull, pig? Child confers, converse with me. Good, good. Good, I'm glad we figured that out. Open trash container. Mm. How many oxies are these kids on? Just speed. Just speed? Just speed. Oh, okay. Kuna likes to ride the lightning. Has Kuno eaten over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days? <laughs> eh, yeah, I mean, legit. Mysteriously, no one knows who did it. Ooh. Sorry, over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. Can I help you? Uh, so about that money I owe you. Yes, uh, have I you have, got it? I have your money. Here's 100 real. Great, thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. It's good you paid before nine o'clock or your door would have been locked electronically. Taps his foot up against the metal box installed in the back of the bar counter. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 rail per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. He takes a key and hands him a key ring. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Is the trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling and Rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out, that's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there and they don't pay the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling is. Prodded him and find out. We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. The lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. Takes the keys from another counter, hands them to you. Just bring them back once you're done, please. By the way, I'm gonna sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. You wait and see, cafeteria manager. <laughs> Absolutely in the question. First we need a sad banger, then we sing this place to shit. <laughs> oh wait, can we level up? Oh uh, yes. Ooh. What you want, what you want, what you, wait, um. Are there any checks that you would want to redo that you fail already? <coughs> any of the white checks? They'll show up in the map. Hmm. The hanged man. Endurance. Handy. Electrochemistry to fix our face. Yeah. Physical instrument. Encyclopedia. Oh. The footprints in the dust. Visual calculus. Yeah. Hmm. We have so many different checks to make. Mm-hmm. You can also just up Inland Empire. Yeah, yeah. 
getting more of that all the time. But I like visual calculus. Ye. Even though we're quite dumb. <laughs> right? Like hmm. maybe maybe suggestion? Yeah. For like making people do what we want. Or hmm. interfacing so we can use computers. Yeah. Wow, we have zero in savoir faire. That means it's two. It's technically a two. I suppose so, yeah. Just with a penalty. Um, it's probably from our shoes. Probably. Just not very comfortable shoes. Yeah, go for it. Bing bong. Accept changes and close A. Now we got the keys to the trash. Very exciting trash times about to happen. You can sleep after 2100. Sleeping heals all your health and morale. Convenient. Mm -hmm. Open the padlock with the key. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe I've opened the lid. Why didn't... Didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in here? There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. Lieutenant Pearson, this hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of carton. You see milk, an egg rest with one broken egg in it, some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Look at rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers? Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes. The lieutenant smells them. Cadaverine odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in early stages of decay. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Drop them in here, officer. Kim quickly searches the jeans. Guitar marks blue jeans, pockets empty, or emptied. He wore them with a belt, to a wide belt. The loops appear stretched, but he looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-covered, olive-colored, <laughs> maybe olive-covered, too, <laughs> appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Whoa bag the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. He nods to himself. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that, thrown out towel? A mug? That's all. Alright, we should go to Garth again and ask him if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the host hostel cleaning at the yard or that one, he nods towards the red-headed boy behind him. I'd advise against confronting that force. You think someone from the Whirling and Rags may have been involved? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and this establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. All right. Search the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands, apple and potato peels, mostly unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. It looks like the corner of something. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? I don't know what this is. 
It is. Look. He points at the clipboard. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. A miserable looking, looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. That's why I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. Well, he doesn't know what to say. His eyes express a rare condolence. Then he picks it up. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains just to be sure someone's not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries, organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Okay, we'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on this case. He peers into the trash where soggy cartons and rags stink uninvitingly. Now tell me what your eagle eyes see, or are we finished? Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and find the Interact tab to read your paperwork. That mug. I'm taking that mug. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist description of the depiction of the yellow man brought... <laughs> but I don't want the mug. Take yet. it. Take it. It's worth it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The man briefly glances at the mug, then returns his sight to the trash. The container sounds a muffled gong. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know you're copa type. Wait, there are copa types? Yes. Guess what's guess what's yours? Cool. Cu some kind of weapon cop? I mean, you could be sorry cop if you want. Sorry cop is always apologizing. Really? Yeah. But what about cool weapon cop? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on here. Uh... <clears throat> hey! Hi! Oh, What's hello! Up? Ah, my lasagna. Thank you. Enjoy your lasagna. You, If you like lasagna, please have some lasagna. Hello, everybody. Hi. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. You. How's it going? Good. Right on. Cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Yeah, it's I know. It's cold. What are you doing? We're playing we're... Disco Elysium, a game you might like. Oh, yeah, neat. You actually might like it. We, um, we're playing a cop who has no memory. <gasps> All right, and those are our stats. What is that? This is our <gasps> stat sheet. There are stats such as spirit to core, suggestion, electrochemistry. That wow, savor fair, which looks like just a lot of legs. Yeah. Yeah. Check out our our key skill. Inland Empire. Cool for dreamers, paranormal investigators, mental crew. What the fuck is this? Inland Empire is the unfathomable spring of imagination, emotion, and foreboding. It enables you to grope your way through invisible dimensions of reality. What the fuck? Gaining insight into it, into that which sight can't see. What's really going on? What do these ending matter riddles have for the world? Fate? The world? The world dash fate. They made it a thing. It. Oh, that is some '90s sci-fi shit right yeah, there. Yeah, no, it's the Dale Cooper skill. Oh fuck yeah! At high levels, Inland Empire animates the inanimate. <gasps> it's necromancy. Just with a really cool name. <laughs> or with like you low... talk with your tie, because your tie is a jerk. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, what? Your necktie. Yeah, your necktie. You your necktie is it. legendarily bad. What? Yeah. Yeah, that skill lets you have a conversation with your necktie. Well, shit. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I must be a place where adventurers meet, because I am in. Hmm. You're welcome. I've missed you, Ken. <laughs> it's time to take a break. Yeah, I think I it's, think it's oh, I'm so. Oh, God, I broke the stream. <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah. Like, eventually. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's 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 take a five uh, chat. Okay. Uh, go do some self care. Bye, everybody. Hey, we're back.
damn fine cup of coffee. Damn fine. So now that we've got our visual calculus up, maybe we can... Yeah, we can look at the footprints yeah. by, the, by the body. And also we can, we can interact with our paperwork now. Ooh, yes, yes. Uh, right, we're in a conversation. That's why oh. we can't open our things. Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. <laughs> Opt in. Okay, but what are the other Kaba types? Oh, you know, Apocalypse, Superstellar, the Advanced Interesting Cop, Liquid Shadow Cop, but you're too sorry to say those things, so here we go. You know what? No, I'm not sorry. No, you don't. Come on, you'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. I'm really not sorry. Wow, okay. Fuck off. Maybe we were, we were wrong about you then. <laughs> Fucking sorry, cop. Yes. Interact. Oh. We can interact with the yellow mug. I don't like this. It features a person of Samaran descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers. Bucktooth, wow. Greeting feebly minded. <laughs> wow. So yeah, the big interact button. It's a ledger you found in the trash, a pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor. For you. <laughs> Below the pathetics, terror, do not look into its blue heart. Inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Uh, let's get rid of it. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your fingers and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. Inspect the clip. An aluminum block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been at attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminum. Oh, hey, that plaid posse raid! Oh, snap! Welcome! Welcome! We're just looking at uh, our paperwork that we tried to flush. Yeah, the artifact of our previous life. Now, why would this man have any regrets about who he had... Uh, how he had come to be what he was. That's the face of a winner right there. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparking, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, what is this? What? He's lost in his own notes. It takes a moment for him to see it. That thing? It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. How can I read it? Or what kind of information? It depends, aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp. Mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Esprit de corps. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all, thank you. Okay, he returns to his neatly kept notes. Inspect the white papers. They're not exactly white, they're, da they're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention, but there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. 
It's the middle of March. You've attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? He raises his nose from his notes. Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. But you really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, unless you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two. He raises both eyebrows. That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you're making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. It's okay, he nods, then turns back to his own fu case files. We all make mistakes. God knows I've made my share. He tries not to think of them. Like a fan of gills, the checkered paper... The checkered paper's dry in your hands. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly legible. There was mention of a naming convention here? Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written in the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters, too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. Uh, others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the hookah parlor, even the rare article-free collapsing tenement. Art murder fe features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done later once you're done inspecting them off close. Kim, my case cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric officer precinct time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular. Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the square bullet hole murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one, he peeks into his notes, the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person, his death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. He smiles. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spike through his head. He died. It was a workplace accident. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more, 15 pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Commit to paper! The tasks you've completed flow out of the pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Is it the revolutionary citizen's militia? Mm -hmm. Or the revishol? It's the revishol. Hmm. Same thing. Hmm. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Sorry. The Americanisms keep trying to pave over mm -hmm. my my uh, Commonwealth pronunciation. Yeah, train. whereas this is like Nowheresville, Europe, so. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually, any ideas? The Furies are at home in the mirror. <laughs> I tried to do that too. <laughs> that's That's some good name right there. Furies, yes, well. <laughs> Furries, yes, well. It's obvious he doesn't like it. I don't know, I have to be honest. I'm not experiencing the internal strife that refers to it also. He furrows his brow. Could we, ma could we make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know, I think. What would that be? A good normal name. The Hanged Man. He likes that. <laughs> Great, that's great. That's what I was thinking too. The hang the hanged man. Good strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. <laughs> uh 
Does this coffee taste like soap to you? It tastes like coffee. I fe fear I may not have thoroughly enough rinsed the carafe. The carafe. He flipped the pages of his notebook. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's, it's got good. the normal oil skin on top. Okay. Could be the beans. Could be the beans. Can I read the case files now? Yep. Mark, Can't no, read. We're too dumb. It's possible, yes. Easy, no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. At the moment, all they do is fall apart in your hands. Some dates in the numeric titular system is all that you have. Yellow papers. In the back, you see the thin, translucent copier paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out according to type of form. What types of form are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. Misconduct fine. A monetary penalization, penalization ranging from two, 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. Station call. These are quite sinister in town. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field off autopsies to dead guys. What delicious power hid within this pathetic mess. You feel better. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 sized board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. What did you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? <coughs> the plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands? You for Open the hidden compartment. Please? God damn it. Oops. Smell it. Smell it. Do we have anything left inside? The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. Now forms the base of the experience. This base is surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Ah, we have to find money and pay guard. We can find some people, maybe? Hmm. Wait, really? We have the fines now. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, kid. <laughs> You're fucking high as shit in public. <laughs> we have six cents. Mm-hmm. That movie doesn't really stand up. There's like one reasonable jump scare in it. I suppose so. All right. Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? He turns the preheater on, waits, takes out his keys and says, all right, ready. I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant's more than happy to show off his precious carriage. Kupri Kinima. Dope. 
The lights unfold with a little click, casting electri electrical light onto the ground be before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold the ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears, a street grid in the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is, Reva Shalawest. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Ravishol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanima's headlights. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears among the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the children's cry. Ah, Maltinez. He smells the air and says, And let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here, he says, his finger near the top of the map on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Seems nice. No, <coughs> it does not, the lieutenant says with optimism. Look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row is 18 dots. What about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border and then some. Count them individually. There are so many it's hard to count, more than 150 at least, maybe even 200. What about the last row? Last row is three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? <laughs> Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you would keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. The first row represents years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? I feel like I went around apologizing all the time. Maybe you were a diplomat or in PR. Doesn't matter, I suppose. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got... Let's see. Wow. More than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually clearing more than 100 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. 10 cases per year. 10 cases a year. Yeah, and we do that in like a month. Yeah. So you're saying I used to be a super cop. Call it what you want. You are a valuable member of your precinct. Now let's look at this last row. Right, those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations here. So I'm a killer. For an RCM officer, especially in Precinct 41, which is the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather... tame. I mean that in a good way. What it f What's it feel like to kill a man, Mr. McCoy? The young woman asks the man across the desk from her. Honestly, babe, says John McCoy, crossing his ankles over said desk, I don't feel anything anymore. It's just like brushing my teeth. I do it once or twice a week and don't really think about it. There's no trace of guilt in his voice. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes, he says, declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping, some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it. Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. He points to your yellow gardening gloves. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. 
Okay, well, let's go. Right, I'll go turn off the lights. You can now see your statistics on the journal page right at the task description. Yeah. Stats! Ooh! Stats! Cases solved, 216. Years in service, 18Y. But you're sorry, cop, because you got five sorries. Oh, wait. I've only done sorries. Yeah. I've not done anything other. I've you have only not sorry. To be a mega star. You've not like told anyone portents of the coming end of the world, and you haven't given anyone boring facts about the police. You also haven't said like I'm the law. Right. <laughs> also, I've like. Completely dodged anything fascist. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. Three. Honor one. What does... Wait, shouldn't there be two stats here? No. <laughs> you can be the goodest good of good boys or the baddest of bad boys. Oh, okay. All right, what now? Uh, lorry drivers smuggling drugs. Who put the clothes in the trash? Track down your gun, track down your badge. Mm -hmm. Get money. Yeah. God, money. Get the body down. Yeah, we should let the bodies hit the floor. Oh, we can try this. Oh, yeah. Mental calculus. Come on. Ha! <gasps> Maybe more than 12. No, eight pairs of boots must have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Go over them one by one. Standard work, one, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, no, number 44. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Wait, which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Count more. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Possible to tell. Could have also been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. I'm pretty good at this. It, aren't you, Die? You're not bad. It's as if the whole world of darkness, everything else is a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. Number seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46, but the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Eight, and yet another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? The lieutenant has been tracking your eye movements. Eight. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. Same guys are going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia, he points to his glasses. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Heavy one. 200 kilogram. 200, he thinks for a moment. Could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who is tied up, let's say, and heavi a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built soon-to-be dead man. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. One of them was carrying him over. Possibly, yes. The lieutenant marks something down in his notebook. Light step, number 41, shoe. Woman or a child? Could be a kid. Okay, how do you know? I just do. Understood. Anything else? An aberration. One, sm one soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the odd soul. Do you have any ideas, lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal, like a joiner at a harbor? Thinks for a second, or maybe a drummer. 
He regrets it the moment he said it. Don't say anything, just nod. I don't know why I said that. We're not looking for a drummer, we're looking for a group of dock workers. The lieutenant clearly appreciates the chance to clear up the drummer issue himself. <laughs> I call him on that. <laughs> he raises his index finger. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. If only I'd come up with that idea. He doesn't seem to hear you looking south towards the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the table. We should keep our... What? Brain? We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Rebeshal. Seven days below freezing. The, le the day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. Well, what do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. All right. Give it a go. All right. battery <laughs> legendary failure the ammonia only makes it worse the combination for forces tears out of your ducts you manage to keep it in once the second time not so much when the vomiting is done your cheeks are wet with tears Ugh. are you okay officer you feel the lieutenant pat you on the back heavy rhythmic pats the weight is reassuring like a crenel on a solid fortification Pat, pat, pat. You're facing tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. Why can't I do this if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier, it never gets used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, bag it. Pats you on the back again. Then drive to station. Maybe throw up on the way if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I've lost my sense of smell. Not being hung up, hung over helps too. Uh, no, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. He withdraws his hands and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay. Volumetric shit compressor. Dope. We should go talk to locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You have received a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet in the bottom right menu and equip it. Yes. Ah, uh, volumetric shit com compressor. Your shit is a part, and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together, compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that'll help. So, half an hour of game time. If we talk to some people, that'll clear. Okay. And then we might be able to approach the body. <laughs> Oh, sure, let's talk to Kuno. Kuno, <laughs> yeah, Kuno will help. Oh, this Kuno okay? <laughs> Boy turns to you, he doesn't care. I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno, the fuck do you want with it? Dead man's clothes from the trash container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. 
I need to know. Listen, listen, he stops you. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen, Kuno saw that you did there. Dumpster diving, sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags, shit like Kuno's wearing. Points to his pants. Your size, good price, 500 real. Wait, I asked what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that <clears throat> up there. He points to the cadaver. Now you want a performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remained silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. Kuno, I... No, Kuno, you don't know anything about the tampering I'm investigating, and I already have pants. Okay, sell me on your fucking pants, Kuno. Pig, these are fallen modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit, made in Morova by scientists. Pants scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek at the plastic wrapped pants. They are graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instruments endorses these pants. They are tart and ready. All right, Pigo. His face lights up. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's gonna steal your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno nods towards the fence. Kuno and C don't trust you. Can't do business without trust. He's marred of his distrust in being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. There's also this mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is that about the... Is this about the fucking clothes again? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain, he whispers excitedly. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker? Cause he's the clothes fucker? Can't hear you, Kuno! Speak louder, Kuno! That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tampered with the crime scene. Clean some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Thanks for a moment. Someone's going to the beatdown basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He nods in approval. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there, and if he did, he wouldn't squeal, but if you find out, maybe you can... Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! She lets out a hiss, even meaner than before. Get away from my Kuno! Yeah, Kuno jumps back. Get your bacon shit away. Kuno doesn't like what he's like to be seen with the popo. Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. No, we've already done this one. Yeah. What the fuck is a Kuno? <laughs> Kuno is Kuno's pig! The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. Ah, so do you refer to yourself in the third person? The fuck are you calling the third person? Kuno's the fucking first person! Looks slightly confused, but proud you came up with that retort. And right, he's getting distracted. You hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder as the child shouts the window overlooking the yard. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! The boy joins in. He's got Kuno! Help! Just answer the question. Help! He's sticking his dick out! Help! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are hurting Kuno! Somebody please! Yes! <laughs> Thump. The blow connects surprisingly well, leaving your knuckles tingling. I like how it was just like... Don't even move at the shoulders, just BAM! <laughs> just reach out. <laughs> ah. Ah, the blow connects surprisingly well, leaving your knuckles tingling. Kuno feels it. This was no light tab. <laughs> the disoriented 12 year old is trying to get his bearings. <laughs> I 
think we can have a normal conversation now. Am I right, Kuno? Officer, this is very far from normal police conduct. The lieutenant breaks the silence. Get yourself together. For heaven's sake, he thinks. This has gone too far. Don't make this any worse than it is. Just get back to questioning the kid. Okay, pig. He's no longer wearing his demonic grin. Something happened. The punch made him calmer. If this act was about him trying to establish dominance over you, it's safe to say things didn't go as he planned. Kuno knows to respect that violent shit. You should see Kuno's dad. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything, he declares with pride. The creature behind the fence has fallen ominously silent. Her Only her eyes are alive, jumping from actor to actor. Okay, pig, talk to Kuno. We're back in this shit. He brushes the dirt off his pants. The fuck do you want? It's not Kuno. It's Kuno Esse. Kuno S is the other one. Kuno S, yes. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you. He even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a corner animal. Cornered animal. She only hisses. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Try to separate them. Fuck you whispering about, he whispers back. He's whispering too. He's going with it, but watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about. Kuno wants to whisper. He's good to fucking whisper, okay? He turns back to the hunger's head. Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can, you can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad at this. Kuno, listen to me. What? She, she's trying to control you. We gotta get you out of here. It's okay. Straightens his back, turns to Kuno S. Pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. You let him off the line. That was bad. A bad, manipulative thing to say. You, sh you should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Try to fuck with my Kuno. A giggle, malicious and gleeful, pulls herself back up higher on the fence. Tried to fuck my Kuno away. Me and Kuno were tight. We ride for life. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass, waves you off. Kuno knows how hard Kuno pushes it. Kuno pushes it hard level. Should give up, Popo, or the cun will keep fucking it out of you. <laughs> Are you okay, Kuno? She looks worried. The, the cun has her confused. That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. <laughs> Kuno, I, I keep throwing up and I can't investigate the body at all. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. Kid is my mimicking violent puking noises. Fucking pathetic. Lucky you didn't die there. I mean, you got some advice for for me. I mean, you both are obviously handling it quite well. Yeah, Kuno's got some advice for you. Kid looks to his left, then to his right, and leans towards you. What are you like, eighty, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of fucking kid. <laughs> Kuno doesn't fucking care. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> fucking shit himself. Oh. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like. Yeah, he, Kuno isn't wrong.
Yo, who's this guy? You'll never know. Probably not. It is all about money, I know. All right, guard. Oh, it's the no, not the cook. Thanks. Hope you found what you were looking for. Found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Who else has keys to the trash container? Trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was, who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threads that solves itself down the road. Turns to the man. Thank you anyway. Could someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with a crime scene. Alright, well, let's talk, talk about something else. I don't remember, hmm, what I would ask him about. Head orb. An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Korachi, Quebec. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods towards the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Korachi and Quebec. Logic. Medium. I don't need to breed everything, brain. It must be his name, Garachi. Garachi Kubek sounds representative. Time for a few questions. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. <laughs> Stay masculine. <laughs> Got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. All right. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Wait, what's that? A heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. I wonder where this door leads. You do? The lieutenant regards you with patient skepticism. It's a door into the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Out of duty, we may find something pertinent to the investigation. Mm, yes, I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in just to be thorough as a side investigation. Yes, a mini side investigation. <laughs> oh! Ooh, volumetric shit compressor. If, when you finish the conversation. Oh, okay. It'll, yeah. it'll pop a head orb for you. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. The blue door does not budge. Yes. There it is. Shit compressed. Bizarre scientific news from Ravishal West today where a police officer shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. Yeah. Yay. Now you can check the body again. And try not to throw up again. All right. I do like the ones where it says, this may take a while. Mm-hmm. Huh. Punching a child in the forehead didn't didn't up our fascist at all. But it did up your good cop, bad cop. Did it? Oh. We also got another good cop, bad cop. Somewhere. Is that, like, does good to cop... to talk to guard about the door oh, while right. you're in here? Does good cop, bad cop operate on, like, a, a spectrum, or is it... You don't get to know. Okay. Can I help you? Mysterious blue steel door. Oh yes, that door, sure. Nothing mysterious about it, it's just a door. 
Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for 10 years. <clears throat> it's just the freight warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He runs his finger across the counter to check for dirt. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little, he shrugs. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the union. Yes, not the whole damn... Union, thank God, just the nastiest and loudest faction. Tosses his head in disdain. Come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit, but they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. He hates the Union, but grudg grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration in at you instead. Retaliate. <sighs> Let him. The lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. We should find out who this loud faction is occupying the booths. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. He looks toward the booth. Men are hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you're seeing anything interesting in the whirling later. Uh, I don't have money to pay for a drink. Now you should totally ask. <laughs> It'll go totally well for you. Hey, uh, Gart, can you spot me a... Yeah. Find out who is in the union box. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna turn the fan on. Oh, yeah, it's getting a little, like, hot in here. Getting hot in here. So lower the temperature. Okay. Okay. Lorry drivers. Lorry drivers. Well, there's this guy. Yep. And this statue. Mm-hmm. Ah. Hidden things. Wait, what is this? What do you say? An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the, fort, on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. Volition. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. What did this king do? Hey, hey, hey. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting with the, the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Ravachal. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, and an end to his family line, and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth, Krugerans, bards, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Arum. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon instead of a bed like a normal person. The man certainly knew how to live. Thank you, necktie. <laughs> no wonder everything went to shit. But wait! You haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. 
the what now? You see, old Philip wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Not just any nose candy, though. We're talking royal Philippian blow, allegedly twice as potent as the stuff you find nowadays in purple. Philippian cocaine was purple. This is a lot to process. So he's addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulidian Bay. So where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulidian Bay thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. So the statue, the original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled restored the monument. Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individual, individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revachol in the poorest part of the city. Satisfyingly metallic sounding. Yeah. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber floating on a sea of shit. Huh. That's funny and nihilistic. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironist. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about the what, what the hoi polloi think of him in death. foreign car kept in good condition. Badly s no, Shut up, I'm trying to read. The lorry's probably stored fuel. Well, all right. Now it stores booze. Grad factory of magnets and miracles, U-49. A lorry truck's a lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This is a big, heavy, grad-made machine as well kept for such an old machine. Look in the window. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorryman's cabin with a personal belonging stickers insignia. Stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his face with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. That's not how you spell sewn. Racist, nationalist, paraphernalia. He grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. The lieutenant nods towards the racist lorry driver. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is, drapes all over his machine. So where is he? Over there. Oh, that guy. That guy. There's that guy. There's the guy at the end of his, his fallen truck. And then I think there's the pale driver who is sitting east of the statue. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Looking for something. This guy's got tiny little eyes that are super close. If, if his eyes were any closer together, his left eye would be in the right socket. And like, <laughs> like they would just cross over? Yeah. You could push him by asking him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely looks like somebody capable of a lynching. Found this mug in the trash. Yours? <laughs> Let me see the soles of your boots. Been admiring the stompers, eh? Grins. Sure thing. Let's check him out. Th sure thing. Check him out. On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads with no immediately discernible pattern. Hmm. What's up with your souls? It's Revachol. Where'd you get boots like that? Custom made cost me a pretty penny. But why? For when the invasion comes, last thing they see before the lights go out is illustrious Revachol. It's gonna stop some people. Yeah. It doesn't look like the lieutenant cares. He just makes a little note. 
You do understand you're stomping on it every day, don't you? No, it's not like that. He looks at his souls. You don't get it. It's when I kick him, you know? Fuck it. It's too complex for you. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. Is it yours? God damn. No. No, it's not mine. What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? Oh, shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. It takes a long drag on a cigarette. Why not? You know where that shit comes from. Saramiriza, Safra, Il Ilmaria. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial, racial economic sabotage. And that's all I needed to know. We're done for now. <laughs> Not sure I agree with your police work there, Kim. Oh. Uh, we'll wait until there's a check we need to pass. <laughs> Thankfully, we can, we can level up in dialogue so we can fail it mm. and then level up and reopen it. Days ain't going by any faster, believe me. How long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout, and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however, is a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers, I know that, I'll account for, otherwise I haven't really asked about that. I've been wasting time right here, keeping busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth, but he keeps his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. What are you hauling? Oh, high-grade high narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. <laughs> Wicked, I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Huh, <laughs> no, I'm joking, my man. Grins. Fall Fallen run runs a nice, clean business. This hall of cargo is mostly sporting goods, you know? Track suits and that kind of thing. Oh, fucking shit, can you s swap me some pants? Right? This is where Kuno got his pants. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident, though we've been making headway in the Ilmarian market lately. One of those fallen tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Oh man, me and the narcotics go way back. He folds his hand behind his head and leans back. We had some good time surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But, he pauses, letting the memory dissipate. Those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. The lieutenant steps in. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bulk shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. The jam's got folks full up in arms, and I'm afraid it's heading towards a, a conflagration. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Ravishal. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Well, good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district, then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of the street, lined with pine trees, small house, no larger than a matchbox, 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, and so are those people. Why did you come here? 
Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Ooh. We don't have any other thoughts unlocked. Oh. Actually, can I bum a smoke off this guy? Hello again, my man. What's on your mind? Nope, don't smoke. Yeah, nothing wrong with that statement. Your senses have nothing to add. You'll have to ask around elsewhere. Very good. If we get some money, you can buy them at free, I think. Oh, okay. I suppose we could go investigate the body. Let's see if there's any other lorry drivers about east. Yep. Right there. I've never done this, so okay. I don't know how this plays out. Pale driver. The small wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there's a warm smile on her face. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter. Some cigarettes and food, mummy. M money. Maybe she's your grandma. grandma? Excuse me. Grandma? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask you some questions. No response. Whatever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Grandma? Snap your fingers in front of if her If you face. want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you jolted her back to reality. The smile on her face has disappeared, re replaced by the wary aspect of a cornered beast. Are you alright? You were Never out. mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. Where else would you be then? When else would you be then? Back in Mefke, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy day a picture starring Gabriel Buenguerro. Until you come along, that is. Right. Why not, Jerife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her mountains of memorabilia, photos and knickknacks line the dashboard. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. Now what do you want me to do with an old woman's boots, Serife? Please? Help me out here, it's important. Please, she raises her boots slowly with contempt. I think you should let me get back to the Gabriel... Gabriel Bunegaro. You're no Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Now the other one, please. Just before Gabriella was the co coronation of Franco, Franco, Franco Negro. Now there's a real man. There's no aberration in the pattern that you can see. She puts the boots down. Moreover, the boots were size 37. Tiny. There are too many discrepancies in all of this. These are not the boots that made the prints. I told you that from just looking at him. Her size is 37. The feet of a little girl, she smiles. They fit well on the pedals. What do you need drugs for, lawman? I see, see what I feel, the great adversary. No drugs can compare. The adversary. Yes, there is a protagonista. She gestures to the intersection. And an adversario. I'm on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hall. Those epithets are familiar somehow. The great adversary. The great unrest. I don't like the sound of any of that. It sounds like a horrible drug. The worst one of them all. Or would I get my hands on an experience like that? If you don't know, pfft, she flicks her wrist in a gesture of casual dismissal. What are you hauling exactly? Your mail on that. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? 
Her shoulder bones crack as she shrugs. Maybe, probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. How can you know, not know what you're hauling in your own lorry? Just this month, I made half a dozen trips from Saramisia to, Gar to Grad on the U-41A. What do you think they take from Sarami... Sorry. Sarar... Sam... Saramiriza. Sara... Saramiriza to Grad. Oh, man. Drugs? Drugs? I don't know. It's Diamond's Lawman, obviously. Yeah, if he had no drugs, who is? Easy, it's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. He just glances across the square. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There's no visibility of any of the others. Why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palate cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back to where it will. To the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? And close this notebook to stress it. Thank you for now. Hmm. Hmm. Have I mentioned that I'm very bad at being a cop? Though I do like the their space trucks. Yeah. Bastards! We have a right to work! Hold I want to take this frosty, one. Everyone. Hmm? I want to take here. this one. Okay. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns towards you. He's a full head taller than anybody, everybody else here. Here to fuck with us? Be the honest worker down? Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, I'm thinking. Good. Now. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. Besides. We're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Maybe you should ask them the question. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed you, piece of shit. So do we, scub. Loitering man hollers in return. Was your goal here? We were promised work, he points to the gates. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you're unable to breach the entrance? Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. Could try to get in through the secretary's office, points up the stairs. Door's locked, guards blocking the way to the access panel. I don't mean the scrawny mesk punk up there either points the dock worker idling on the staircase. I mean head measurer or whatever he is. Wait, head measurer? Huge 70s guy standing up there in an overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. Access panel is right behind him. How bad could one guy be? You seem capable. Bad. The man glares at you. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. He's trained. I don't know how Union has a trained killer up there, but that one's no joke. My men are tired and hungry. They're workers, not fighters. Why don't you just talk to them? Like civilized folk, you mean? Man rubs his chin. These native fucks don't understand civilized. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home, at least for now. You can't get in anyway. No. They will give up eventually, or get drunk, leave the button unguarded, then we charge. The man rubs his jaw, a perfect, lightly bearded square wedge. Who are these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. Man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. Came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let those in who do want work. I have a question. The lieutenant looks him in the eye. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No, they follow the rules of the market, rules of the economy, because they were, he starts bellowing, given a job to do. 
No kidding, I want to get into the harbor too. Have fun, he snorts. Union ships are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates trying to meet their fat boss. Uh, I'm trying to do a, a, an official thing. Right to work. He again shakes his fist large, his large fist, then turns back to you. Shameful cops doing nothing. You should bring backup, open the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Eh, it's not really my area. I don't know. We're not picking in a, a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Turns around and bells the gate. Let us work! Um... What do we even... Is there a pawn shop nearby? Yeah. Where? End of the road. End of the road? Oh, really? Okay. Let's go and see if my gun is there. You can double click to hustle. Ooh. Do the hustle. Free. Smooth. Like butter. Ooh. An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Silly tree, oh, no, that's he, not where he you tried go. tried to go around the other side of the fence to where the ball game is. Uh-oh, there's a ball game? Yeah, right there. Oh. Tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them out. What's down here? The pawn shop. Ooh. Through that door. Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster times. I think Roy might be my favorite character. Really? Oh, this is exciting then. Mostly military wear with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. Some kind of machine? An antique cash register? bust of a woman, the plaque simply says, Day. In the dark, a film projector is wearing away. It's not often that I see offices of the RCM in my pawn shop. The man in the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of the light across the walls of the shop. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting oh, no. you. Oh, no. Not at all. I, oh, I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. <laughs> entertained? He might be high if he is on what? What is he on? Oh. Ah! oh, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it in many other things besides, but you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if asked out loud. <laughs> By the way, do you happen to have any... Guns? Guns? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, someone else here <clears throat> came here earlier today asking the same question. Promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman, although she kept referring to herself as pig, which was odd. Found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. Le Lieutenant turns to you. You sold your sidearm, issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it. 
Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I sold my gun. <laughs> I can't not be sorry, cop! <laughs> it's really funny! <laughs> he sighs. Yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. This mess, he means your mess. Any idea where I can find my buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There's nothing you can do about it now. You'll just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Wait, I sold you my gun? You, uh... With Kim here, too? That's just sounded, that just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. He hesitates. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Ravishal Citizens Militia. I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts, photon emissions. Unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. He looks away. You weren't quite yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and you need the money. And I said I don't normally buy firearms. You put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. <laughs> yeah, it happens to everyone. How much did I sell the gun for? 15 rail. That's not a lot of money. It's clear that the lieutenant looks from you to Roy and then back to you. It's clear that he, ha he that he hopes this tableau might still turn out to be a bad dream. It's not, though. It's this has got to be the most... Wow. <laughs> There's pity there, too, in case you didn't notice. Oh, I'm sorry you had to see me in that state. No apologies necessary, officer. At least now I know... Hey, Cam, we figured it out. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you about my missing gun again. Oh, okay. I doubt it. I can try to answer any questions you might have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business, bad for everyone. All right, actually, that's all I got. I have other business to take care of now. Wait, can we sell him the mug? Probably. It's the can first we... option in his dialogue is to sell stuff. Mm. Hello again. How can I help you? Oh, I don't have anything to sell at the moment. All right. Just sell our pants. He won't buy clothes. No. Ooh, Dumpster. Yeah. Ooh, gloves. Ooh, fingerless gloves. Plus one to electrochemistry. Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15 a.m. Man on water lock. Good day to you, officer. Burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. Cat can have a little salami. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock on, on, and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down in the canal between them. Well, what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Revishal. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off until then. Can I have some, uh... <laughs> little can salami? Cops, can cops have a little salami? <laughs> Sure thing. Want some too, officer? 
turns to the lieutenant. The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. Why not? He takes a slice of the salami from the man and chews on it. You know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market. Bizarro church, not much, much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Thinks for a moment. Yeah, no, not, not, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Right by. Peace! Water lock control panel. A couple of indicator lights are out, are missing from this con control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plot. Plucky. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed Samaran butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Butter sign down! <laughs> Just like my toast. <laughs> A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Lang. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name <clears throat> Silang is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. Gives you a thumbs up. Everything's cool. The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer. You're very cool. No, I'm not. Both hands hey. into finger pistols. Fires a few finger pistols. Ah, we're under in the attack! Air. I'm not cool. What? No. I can't believe you said that. You got a personal style. You know what you like. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Settles back into a pile of boxes he's sitting on. Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act questions what kind of stuff are you selling here only the coolest goods and rubbish all we got sneakers speakers extremely comfy pants too try them on right here no shame only freedom where'd you get those comfy pants i'm an entrepreneur officer begins counting on his fingers I've got sources, buyers, suppliers, distributors, manufacturers, wholesalers, all extremely cool and above board. Is there a discount for cool officers like me? No need for discounts at Selange's officer. Everything's already on sale. He nods towards the crate. Anything you want, 50% off. Anything for you, he smiles. Where are you from, Selang? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now, all revishal. But you're not local, are you? Very sharp, officer. I'm Cyrese from the CA province of the Cyrese Empire. The apricot suzerainty, you know. Apricots are delicious. The apricot suzerainty, the lieutenant explains, is what CA archipelago is commonly known as in revishal. He pauses. It's a bit of a fraught term. I'm sure you understand. No, no. Apricots come from Sige. Better explains. My grandma used to grow them, but Sige is a shithole and that's why I came to Revishal. Here's much better for an independent entrepreneur. Less laws. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur? I spend half my profits back to my grandma on Sige. Well, if it's for his grandma, you should buy a lot of things. I'll look around, thanks. Manhole. It's a really odd term. Sour, acidic, and strange. It's a hole for a man. I suppose so. I suppose it's preferable than the than a men hole. How many men? As many as fit.
Okay, let's go get the body down, and then we'll thank subs. All right, if you can. Let's see if we can. There's no rule that says you have to get it down. I suppose not, but I mean, it's either that or just let Kuno keep whipping shit at it. Oh yeah, shit compressed. All right. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do that after seven days, yes. We're in deep, we're deep in decomposition here. Ugh, Morty. The man before you was naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots, his skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Boots! The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. With his notebook under his arm, the lieutenant crouches to inspect the souls. Technically speaking, these are sabaton, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is... This is where the make would be. Where? Under the heel. Fairweather, he turns the boots slightly. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. He nods towards Kuno, who's eyeing you suspiciously. This is one thing he might actually know. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar in your hand is itching for some action. It sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. He points to the boots. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them. Hundreds of them all together. Much like, like the scales of some ancient white monster cracked and pearly. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Arbor Company, but that's just hearsay. Initial report? These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. The cadaver slowly twists on its cargo belt, its torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard edge polyester cuts into his neck. Above a sliding buckle ties the belt to a branch. What kind of rope is that? Industrial strength, the kind used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus, when the circus leaves town, they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Like in a harbor. Yes, it looks like they used whatever on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. How did they even get him up there? Well, they probably threw him out, threw the belt over. The brief suggests as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? <laughs> no. My past is undergone- FOR THE LAST FUCKING TIME, KIM! Okay. You should ask me once the- for one the mo first moment we get. It's not merely polyester, it is steel reinforced. He rises to inspect the news. See these lines? This is where the wire's from. I see rab rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I assumed. 
inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso from the right shoulder to the solar plexus each time they intersect small white stars formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks line riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around the heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. <coughs> Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars? He turns around to breathe before inspecting it closer. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular, customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminum from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears, some sort of camera. Let him work. Shit, Kuno! I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to try. No, I can't do what it. What the fuck is that? <laughs> An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I only have two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... A small... a sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. In case we need it, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. Cool machine. Yes, he strides. He slides the camera closed and tucks it away on his belt. It is pretty cool, isn't it? What, what do we need the photo for, Kim? It contains insight into the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us, someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Here, a souvenir. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. Don't lose it. The glassy-eyed corpse. Look him in the eye. His eyes are a milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from the sockets. There's no one home, just some aquatic terrors here. Oh. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. <coughs> the death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat, there is an expression not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man is experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pale yonder in the past, way out in the west. I can't get the compartment in my ledger open. The blue heart? Oh, that's good shit. You'll love it. Just press down and fuck it open like you always do. Fuck it hard, Kapapu the clown. He means force. It'll work. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. Look at me. Who were you when you were alive? Killer. A motherfucker and a killer. Another question for you. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... What have you? Imagination. Yeah, man. Don't be crazy. Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah. Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copper rooney rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no, you're no Rooney. Rooney, of course not. The name is Raphael Ambrosius Custo. Listen to yourself. You're not Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry. Could I really be Harry? can be anything you want, Brother Capo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Capo. It was love all along. 
can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo, I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless, looking into my eyes, standing there. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't have anything else to do with this cave. Something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous. <laughs> the clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way, something hidden, something... It's coming, a miracle from the Northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air on your hands, the cold spring air smoothing them over. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. You're feeling sexual arousal when they hanged you. Do I look like an auto... Yeah, actually. <laughs> Captain Coppadromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. Enough! You can come back and look into his face anytime you want. Ask me your little questions, freshen your memory, create associations, remind yourself of your mortality, Coppolopo. How do we get him down? He stops to think, then checks his notes. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss out on some of these things once we're down. Step back and have another look first. Squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mass of green and pink. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue, his batted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corp corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Stop. Relax your eyes. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos. Actually, I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing it? How should I know why you're squinting, officer? His face and hands are pink, thighs too, the rest is greenish. Oh! You're trying to assess lividity. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thighs and onto his boots. So what do you think? Something's coming out of him. Wait, he's beaten up. See the brute, like... A pool of blood and feces is eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purged liquid is dripping into it drop by drop. Yum. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? Talking about shit! <clears throat> Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. He doesn't really want to dwell on it too long. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slut! <laughs> it means you fucked him up good, Kono! Girl yells, fucked him up brutal like! I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet and his neck. He points to his fatted chin. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune, tune with that hanging. That's what I think. Maybe he was strangled by someone? Yeah, seems like a lynching to me. Everything here seems to corrobor corroborate that assumption, but we should still get him down before assigning a probable cause of death. I think we should back off and save. Okay. And do our subs. Okay. All right. Man, we aren't even out of day one. I know. I've gotta like quadruple my time estimates. Oh. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, Jonas John, fourth, subscribed for 15 months. Hello, future Cameron Court. Thanks for the stream. Eblock gave us 300 bits. Hype for more ineffective detective. <laughs> Old man PJ, subscribed for 27 months. Welcome. Nathan J. G. Uh, G. A. has subbed for the 28th month. Thank you. Thermal Barrett Kitten, 58 months. T. Stodden came back for the 71st month. Monsieur Squirrel, 60 months. Good luck, fail copping. Vector Zero reset for the 15th month. This It's the most wonderful time of the week. Thank you. The ghost with the most. 28 months. Madness, I say. Athatar came back for the 38th month. Awkward Burb. Subscribe for eight months. Hi. That's all. 
Ghost user 1984 sub for the ninth month. Clap emoji. Sump smash. 28 months. Welcome. Foxfire came back for the 25th month. Something something 1 plus 1 12th of the years. Arconic energy. 38 months. Soprano cat came back for the 34th month. Exactly as intended. 25 months. Hit the button. Kerasis came back for the 37th month. Thank you. Nimrod108, five months. Thank y'all for the amazing content positivity you promote. Keep doing your thing. Um, wow. Inquisitor Gaia gifted subs to Mandilio, Fenaban, Super Cryptic Command, Aztren, and Narwhals in a Trench Coat. And thank you to Ben for that raid. Dandy Swag for 30 months. I keep forgetting. Sable Drake came back for the 14th month. GCU, of course, I still love you. 58 months. The Hanged Man, Tarot Major Arcana, figure of a man hanged upside down. Represents the bridge between heaven and earth. Indicates transformation, ascendant, sacrifice of self towards a higher rebirth. Electrotal came back for the 37th month. Thank you. Wormwood Gaming subscriber for four months. Lurheart. Thank you. VT Marik came back for the 17th month. Thank you. 11th Ocean, 51 months. 51 months? That's almost a year. A Box of Noobs came back for the 5th month. High five. Is metrics 11 months, almost that one year. Hydra Wiggins came back for the 37th month. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great emote use. Mm. BTC 1220, three months. Holy moly, three months. That's like 66 months till nice. Jogger Frog came back for the second month. Thank you for coming back. Tears right, red right hand, 21 months. And Victus Live came back for the second month. More months. More months. More months. So, um, more content is coming your way soon with Let's Know, mm -hmm. featuring uh, Ben and, and Adam. Yeah, or... as soon as we evacuate this room, mm. someone much, else will be here. Much like the hanged man's bowels are evacuating, we too will evacuate soon and be replaced in a way unlike the hanged man. Reiner, 51 months, last second sub question. Would a good title to this adventure be Bad Cops All the Way Down? Oh, God, I hope not. It's, it's Sorry Cop. It's I hope so we get better at Sorry coughing. Cop apologizes. I, I I don't know how else to go through life. I'm sorry. I just just fucking up and owning that. I'm just, I'm just trying to own my errors and do better. You're gonna have a bad time. I'm so bad at being a cop. I'm so bad at being a cop. Ah, yeah. We'll be back next week with more of this. All right. Farewell. Bye.